Louisiana Beer Reviews, we're looking at Ondex Volbeer Hell. Okay, 1455 this monastery was established. Already took the cap off. Realized I didn't have my glass. Um, 1455, in the days of the First Reich, the Heligus Romischer Reich, the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation. At the end of that time, with the uh, ascendancy of the French Revolution, the f rise of uh, Freemasonry in Europe, the monastery was seized by the government. But then King Louis, okay, uh, We'll talk about these Grace Vienna sausages in a minute. It's 5.47 a.m. King Louis of Bavaria, they needed money to help the poor. The government didn't have funds to do it, so they got the Benedictines to take the monastery back in 1850. So after 47 years, they returned, and it's been owned by them ever since. And they brew beer to raise money. They did build a new facility back in the 70s or 80s because they said that they didn't have enough capacity at their old brewery. Okay, so they said they can't prove that they were brewing beer in 1455, but the, the monks said they assumed that they were since that was a, a common practice. And there's four of them, of these, there's a big lineup, but four of them were sent to the United States. This full beer, full beer hell, that means bright full beer, the green label. Um, super premium Bavarian lager, 500 milliliter bottle, 4.8% alcohol, okay. Water, barley malt, and hops, and yeast, but that's it. Located just outside of Munich, Bavaria, this famous brewery, part of equally, uh, the equally famous Benedictine Monastery, is located right at the foot of the holy mountain of Andex, a destination for pilgrims since the 15th century. It is known for its spectacular beers and hospitality. Okay, uh, anyway, um, they get the, we get the regular wheat beer, the dark wheat beer, the 7.9% Doppelbach, and I've had those three, reviewed them on the YouTube and this. There's many others but we only get four. Grace Vienna chicken sausages and chicken broth. There's a regular Grace Vienna sausage and I believe there's a spicy version. Um, Grace established in 1922 in Kingston, Jamaica. Still headquartered in Kingston, Jamaica but they have headquarters also subsidiary of satellite headquarters in the United States and some other Commonwealth con countries like United Kingdom and Canada I believe. But that a can I bought in Miami, Florida, close to the Marlins baseball park, and it's the production number says that it's coming from Fort Matt, Madison at the Armor Foods facility in in Iowa, Fort Madison, Iowa. All right. Anyway, so this could be my breakfast: the the crackers, the the yellow onions, the last of the smoked gouda, and this hot sauce. Not the day's insanity. That's it's too hot for something like this. That's something to put in a soup or whatever. Louisiana hot sauce. Okay. Um, already prayed. I'll have to cap the rest and you know drink it after church. But uh, we'll knock out the coffee. I can see that while I'm talking that the lacing is really clinging to this glass. And I can also see in this less than ideal light that it's quite hazy. There's a good amount of haze, not a whole lot of bubbles, a few little lazy bubbles breaking loose, uh, but not particularly filtered. And I've seen some reviewers complain that people over filter beer. I don't mean they're complaining that they overfilter beers like Coors Light or Budweiser, but craft beers, craft style beers like this, they'll complain they overfilter them. 
And um, the, the particles at the bottom usually are not going to hurt you. Um, it's just yeast typically. I'm trying to see if there's any down there. I can't tell. Okay. This was $3.99. Yeah, there's gunk. There is a lot of caked sediment down below. So as cloudy as this is, it would become much cloudier if I was to do the swish and if I were to do the swish and pour, which I intend to do by the way later. L O nine L O eight nine five. There's no kind of sensible date there. I don't know how old this beer is. I'm assuming it's not very old because I don't recall seeing this in Dorgnax before a couple of weeks ago. So, I'm, I'm assuming it's new. Let's see. It smells... <sighs> rainy. Euro lager type thing. might see it on video, you probably never see it in real life. I know it's sold around the Chicago area. I haven't even seen it last time I went up there, but it's special export. And there's a special export light. Highland and special export. That was a Dortmunder style beer developed 1934. This has some of those characteristics that sort of old closet smell or and it's even a, an unusual yeast aroma that's hard to place a little fruitiness here with with maybe even a little turn fruit aspect so that's making me think it might be old I remember I had this golden pheasant from Slovakia once it was really old and if you get these lagers that are really really old they'll smell like old turn fruit but let's go with the flavor I want to retract that. I don't think it's old. Just in the initial aroma. What I'm picking up here is strong, sweet barley malt, okay? Some grassy hops. It does have a little of that Dortmunder style aspect. And a Bavarian full beer might be similar to that. I don't really know. Um, there's so many subcategories in the lager style over there in Europe. I like the way that lacing's clinging. I like the way it's clumping at the top. It shows some good character. It's not just like fizz away. Now if you're used to drinking what I said, Budweiser, Coors Light, this is going to seem a little gamey to you maybe. Like you might say, whoa. You're certainly going to find it's richer. It has more body, so it's medium body. The finish is not super clean. so It's, it's in the clean area though. It's not a dirty finish. And it's um. Very refreshing here at 5.55 a.m. or whatever. I'm going to get back from Mass. It'll be a good morning finisher. Um, I'm thinking the IBUs must be around 20, 18 to 20. It's got a little sharp hop bite. On a Cyclops scale, sweetness is probably four out of at least three out of five sugar cubes, maybe three and a half. I was going to say four. I'm not too sure about that. Bitterness would be three out of five hop cones. So if you want a beer that has interesting, like, old 
house smells and tastes, you know, like an old 85, 89-year-old person's house. An old closet, old woodwork, old leather, some old dried fruit. with some interesting hot bitterness and you don't mind paying $3.99 for the bottle this is one to get okay this is in your craft beer they don't really obviously use that term it, there because they were doing this hundreds of years ago you understand long before that conceptual conceptualization of American craft beer came along 1971 so And what craft beer originally was, was a return to the old styles that had been largely abandoned, largely, not completely, abandoned in the 1950s and 60s and 70s due to really poor sales of those things. Like that example, Heilemann's old uh, special export, Dortmunder style, they were selling it. Pap sold Special Dark. Valentine sold India Pale Ale. But they just weren't real popular. So the craft beer push was um, to, uh, to bring all that back in a way. And so it has come back strong, and we're happy about it. And this never went away. Just And we're happy it's coming to America now. So I would score this, oh... That rich yeast zinginess, you know, you pick that up. Mm. On this cool morning, I have the window open. I have to say an A. Most excellent. So most excellent Germanic, Southern Germanic product. And I'm going to end this review by saying, les les bon temps relais. Y'all come on down to southeastern Louisiana. Mmm. Well, yeah. Hell.